Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Emil Lezak. I'm innovation broker, and I have the pleasure to officially open the CIRMED fi final workshop. On this final workshop, we will have also the presentation of our sister project, uh, Coralis Achieve and uh, Bamboo. Just to let you know for all the attendees that all the questions which we would like to, to ask, the q and session bottom uh, uh, could be fine and you could write um, the question, but please uh, assign and write person for uh, your feedback. So next slide, please. There is a, a agenda which you could uh, clearly uh, see the uh, first uh, will be the presentation on Ludo deals, then a uh, presentation of Sirmet, Bamboo, Achieve, Coralis, uh, Slide the Pulse, Q and, uh, uh, and session. Uh, will be also some coffee break uh, time for a refresh, and then the disc discussion panel moderated by Franz Horzenberger and uh, clo uh, closing and remarks on the final workshop. And next slide, please. Yes, uh, this is the QR uh, code for the Slido. Uh, you could use it very easy by scan, uh, scan it and uh, we'll have at this moment a few simply a uh, question. Next slide, please, Jakub. Uh, and uh, we have uh, for each of the question 30 uh, seconds just just to mark uh, what uh, we. From which sector we are. So please, please, please use it. Just five seconds to the end of the first question. And I think we could pass for the for the next one. How familiar are you with the events uh, topic? Please vote it. Also 30 seconds. Leave it uh, for you. Five seconds to remaining time for make the answer. The next one, please. Slide. And now we have the presentation of uh, Ludo Deals from Vito and uh, As Aspa Aspire, the challenges and the opportunities of the energy intensive industry sector in terms of energy and resource efficiency. Due to the personal uh, reasons, uh, this presentation has been uh, previously uh, recorded and will be that the recording will be uh, given in the presentation. Please, Jakub. Good morning, everybody. I would like uh, to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, as an introductory lecture of this workshop today about the challenges and opportunities of the energy intensive sectors in terms of energy and resource efficiency. First of all, I would like to apologize for not being online. This is a recorded presentation because uh, this morning I have to go to the funeral of a very good friend of mine, so apologize for that. When we look to the Green Deal, which is the European uh, policy towards climate neutrality and circularity, then we see that a lot of actions are really linked to the energy intensive industry, 
meaning that we have to reduce the CO2 emissions by 55% in 2030 and by 100% in 2050. We have the European Circularity Action Plan. We have the European Industrial Action Plan, which is exactly what uh, supporting us uh, what we are doing. And we have Repower EU because we, of course, are energy intensive and we uh, use or consume huge amounts of energy, uh, which are is not easy these times with the high energy prices as well. Uh, when we um, look to what we really want to achieve, we have in uh, Spire three ambitions and our vision 2050 is going to close the climate technological gap. It means we want to become completely climate neutral in 2050. We uh, want to um, go for the process industries as hubs for circularity. It means we will go to zero landfilling uh, of recyclable and recoverable waste in the EU. And we uh, will promote as much as possible the circularity. And we can only do this if we stay at a global level competitive uh, with our processes. So that's really our ambition. And having said that, I must uh, say you that uh, we have several challenges. Here you see for the different uh, sectors, you see the 10 different sectors of the process uh, intensive industry and of Spire. And there you see the emissions of CO2. And then um, it's quite clear that we are responsible for more than 700 million tons of uh, CO2 emissions, of which 473 are coming directly from fossil fuel combustion, 145 from our processes, so it's very difficult to tackle that, and 131 from the electricity that we uh, use at the nowadays existing carbon intensity of electricity. The second challenge linked to the second ambition is if we look to the feedstock flows, then we see that we use biomass, metal ores, minerals and fossil a feedstock to make all kinds of products, but also we see that a lot of it is going in emissions to the air and a lot is going to landfills. If we look in the bottom, we see that quite a low amount of it is already recycled. And this is shown as well in this slide where you see that the waste that is generated in Europe is about 2.5 billion tons. And we have the ambition to uh, reduce this for nearly 60%. We will try to use 57% of this waste as a potential uh, input for our feedstock as a renewable uh, feedstock that we can use in our processes. And overall, and this is linked to our third ambition, we must stay competitive because we have we are responsible for 8.5 million direct jobs, about 20 million indirect jobs. We are um, uh, dealing with about a half a million of enterprises with a total uh, turnover of more than 2 trillion euro, and which is about 5% of the EU GDP. Uh, if we look now to the sustainable use of energy in the, the processes, then we see that we are using uh, electrical energy and thermal energy in our processes. And the, the ways that we can change this is by um, going, uh, replacing the thermal energy by renewable electricity integration. Um, that we can also go to the uh, replacement of thermal energy by alternative fuels like hydrogen integration, the use of biomass, the use of waste, and also the electrification of our furnaces, ovens, kilns, and, uh, and so on. In the processes itself, we are working as well on electrification of the processes and especially also on the energy efficiency. And then uh, due to the, a lot of thermal energy that we use, we produce quite a lot of heat that is produced in excess and where we try to reuse it and to upgrade it in certain forms. And finally, some CO2 will still come out of our systems and there 
we look forward to see in which way we can capture it and in which way we can use it in the production of um, materials that uh, can uh, go to consumption in a certain way. This means minerals, polymers, chemicals, etc. Uh, we can look in the same way to the uh, feedstock um, uh, processes and there we see that at the level of uh, uh, end-of-life uh, materials, we are looking to new technology and tools for material tracing. We are working strongly on innovative technologies for material upcycling. Uh, and to the level of the process itself, we look to see source efficiency. And at the level of water, which is one of our solvents, of course, we look strongly to new wastewater technology in order to make it as circular as possible. At the level of materials that come out, we take into account safe and sustainable by design, because by doing so, of course, we can uh, help much more the recycling afterwards than we have with the materials that we use nowadays. A third uh, approach that we're looking at is industrial symbiosis, where we try to set up what we call head source circularity, where the different sectors of the process industry can be combined in systems due to the geographical proximity and where we can make use of water, energy, waste, residues from one company that is used by another company uh, in a symbiotic way. We also take into account there not only industrial symbiosis, but also industrial urban symbiosis, which means that we also can provide energy to the cities, but also take the waste from the cities and use it as a stock. Uh, based on that, we made a complete uh, strategic research and innovation agenda, which is based on 14 innovation areas. And you can also find all this information in this agenda. And I can also announce that next year on, the first half of 23, we will make an update of this SRIA. In this SRIA, we take um, into a account that we have these emissions, the waste, and we must stay competitive. And then we go to innovative solutions, which means process innovation via electrification, the use of energy mix, CCU, and resource and efficiency, efficiency and flexibility. Overall, we apply digitalization as much as possible. We look to non-technological aspects. And as I mentioned just before, we are looking strongly to this industrial urban symbiosis process. Um, of course, no one of these innovations can lead to climate neutrality. You see here that we need a panoply or a tapestry of innovations in order to get to 100% decrease of CO2 emissions. And the same can be done for circularity. Also there, we need to combine different of these processes in order to move uh, forward. So the way is long. We are 10 sectors. We are a unique cross-sectorial community. We have 36 innovation programs that will fill the gap between the development and the final uh, ambitions. Uh, and then it is not finished, of course, because at the end, we need to deploy the technology in a full Plant. And so this means that we are working also to support the first of a kind plants taking uh, into account or making use of these innovative technologies. And the same is true, of course, for these hubs for circularity where everything becomes integrated. And this all to realize our ambitions as climate neutrality, zero landfilling and uh, staying competitive. If I say that, then it's easy because, uh, but we see that it's not that easy because there are also boundary conditions and we need, this means we need renewable electrons, we need renewable carbon and we need renewable feedstock in a certain way. For the electrons, I will not go into detail, but it is very clear 
that we all are fishing in the same electron pool. So availability of green electrons is certainly a limitation, which means that efficiency is the most important approach. Speaking about carbon, of course, there is a lot of carbon uh, under the form of CO2 that can be used, but then you see on the left hand side of this uh, uh, gr uh, graph of this slide that capture is uh, quite uh, costly and it depends uh, strongly. That's something that you see on the right hand side of this slide on the kind of uh, CO2 that is emitted by the different uh, sectors. So. Um, CO2 can be used as a, as a feedstock, but we see that capture uh, is quite uh, expensive and uh, we need and purification as well. And so we need uh, further development in order to do this and then in order to use the CO2 as a feedstock. We are also looking to biomass and to waste. And there, of course, also we have to see in which way we can use waste uh, wastewater, um, bio, uh, biomass, plastics, etc., in the most optimal way. Uh, having said that, you see that our feedstock is energy, carbon, and inorganics, and we try as much as possible to reduce fossil extraction by going for the energy to uh, renewable energy which is then uh, transformed into electrons or hydrogen. For carbon, we are looking to reduce the fossil extraction by moving to the use of CO2, biomass and recycling. And for inorganics, uh, also there, because due to the scarcity, we try as much as possible uh, to um, recycle these um, inorganics also, so that also there, we can reduce the minerals extraction. So this brings us in the way forward. So we need key emerging low carbon technologies. Therefore, processes for planet defines the research and innovation needs to develop these technologies via these innovation actions. We need integration of these innovations and the achieved innovations up to TRL7 under Horizon Europe are, must be made ready to move forward. And this is strongly supported by what we call the additional activities. The additional activities are activities that uh, take into account the further development from TRL 7 to TRL 8, 9 via demonstrators and first of a kind. In that way, we can speed up the research into a real economy by supporting these first of a kind uh, plants. We call it in our um, Sriya, our marbles, because we are very proud of these first of a kind plants. We use different scenarios to leverage and, uh, and investment. Uh, we are very strongly based on cross-sectorial, inter-regional and value chain based uh, optimization. And of course, in order to realize all these things, we need regulation standardization and societal embedding. With that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. I apologize once again for not being online, but my colleague Franz Hertzenberger will certainly be ready to answer all your questions. Many thanks and uh, see you soon. Uh, due to technical reason, I think that uh, presentation on Ludoders uh, was uh, valuable, showing w uh, how Aspire Office ap approach all the challenges in the energy intensive industry and what they expect uh, from the project and how the project achieve uh, such objective and the goals. Now we could hear from the presentation of Michael Merchan from uh, Technalia. Michael. Uh, the floor is yours, please. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Emil, for the presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending uh, this final workshop of the CIRMED project. Uh, my name is Mirka Marchan, and I'm a senior researcher at Technalia Research and Innovation in Spain. Uh, with this, uh, pre with my presentation, I would like to show you all a sort of a view 
of what we've been working on in the similar project during these last four years of uh, a project that is now about to, to end. Okay, now. Uh, in this project, we have addressed some of the challenges of the industrial sectors that are uh, considered as process industries, and that has been now perfectly explained by, by uh, Mr. Diels. Uh, some support of these industries are a uh, semen uh, um, production plants, steel making companies, and uh, companies from the non ferrous uh, sectors. Uh, these three industries are represented in our project consortium with three companies that have the role of possible end users of the technologies. As you all know, processing industries are characterized because they are huge consumer of uh, raw materials because they need to extract, transport and process these raw materials to obtain the semi-finished or uh, high quality end products. Uh, and they are also high consumers of energy uh, as they need this energy to uh, manufacture the product by means of physical, mechanical or chemical methods. Some of the challenges related to the improvement of the energy and resource efficiency of process unit has been considered in the design of what we have, we have called the SIRMED solution. Schematically shown, uh, this solution uh, can be considered a process unit, this one that can be integrated in an already existing uh, process unit. In this, in the currently, in the current existing process unit, we are um, working with some raw materials that are a uh, process using energy, of course, to obtain a product, but also some byproducts and wastes. And the idea with these byproducts and wastes are to introduce them in our seedment process unit to obtain a revalorized byproduct that can have a market value and also an inert fraction that can also have a place in the market. Uh, at the same time, uh, some of the materials can uh, be again reutilized in the same process. And in addition, we have the possibility of recovering energy from the waste has, waste heat, sorry. Uh, and um, in this way, we are contributing to reduce the overall consumption of uh, process uh, of the energy of the process. And at the same time, we are reducing the CO2 emissions. Uh, this way, we can say that we are able to reduce the primary uh, resource consumption. We can also increase the energy efficiency. We can reduce the fossil-based CO2 emissions, and we can reduce the production cost of the process. And this is done uh, with a, a modular solution composed by three different uh, modules, a metallurgical furnace, an energy recovery device, and a digital platform that can be implemented as a unique assembled solution or as individual uh, different modules, depending on the requirements of the, of the company. So uh, briefly, uh, I will present the technologies, but I will not go, go, in, go in deep into any of them. Uh, we have a uh, metallic waste valorization uh, that has been uh, validated through the EFIMELT demonstrator. This is a metallurgical furnace which is based on high power thermal plasma energy system and also biogenic carbons obtained from biomass and that is able to recover valuable metals from industrial metallic wastes. Then we have uh, the RECU waste, the waste heat recovery and storage unit that is able to transfer the waste heat from exhaust gases into compressed air. Uh, adapting or having the possibility of adapting the energy generated to the compressed air demanded through a CVT and an energy storage system. And finally, we have uh, the Analytics for Factory 4.0 digital platform that is composed of a set of versatile, scalable and replicable physical and digital tools that is able to acquire on the one hand, uh, to acquire a monitor, sorry, on the one hand, process parameters and also uh, predict and optimize the uh, industrial processes. Okay, let's start with the first of the three technologies, which is the metallic waste valorization. Uh, we know that process industries are generators of huge amount of wastes. Usually these wastes are processed at uh, centralized treatment plants, but in these plants, wastes from different origins and different compositions are mixed and treated. 
Uh, we consider them as inefficient process because uh, they have the difficulty of adapting the process parameters to the specific amounts of wastes and the characteristics of the waste that are being treated. Um, moreover, these processes make use of fossil based reducing agents and in addition, these wastes have to be transported from the wet, from the plants where they are generated to the centralized treatment plants. So we are also contaminating with this transportation. Uh, and finally, it is important to highlight also that only a part of the valuable elements containing the waste can be recovered and still a high amount of wastes are landfill. OK, the solution we have developed in the project and that has been validated with the female demonstrator, that, that is this one that has been implemented and validated at the DGMET industrial facilities, uh, represents a sustainable solution to process these wastes. We can say that it's an in-house solution, so it can be implemented in the same plant where the wastes are generated, avoiding this transportation, and it is modular because we can add different uh, process lines if needed to treat a higher amount of uh, wastes. It is adaptable also to treat different uh, wastes, either their different uh, compositions or different amount of wastes, and um, we have also uh, a um, highly efficient high power thermal plasma uh, heating system to power this, this, this metallurgical furnace. Then um, we can say that we have the possibility of working with biochar based reducing agents. In this case, in the project, we have worked with a biochar coming from a torrefacted a good biomass. Uh, this torrefaction process has been selected because uh, comparing to the currently or com conventionally used pyrolysis processes, with these torrefaction processes, we, uh, are, we are able to um, process this biomass at lower temperatures and consuming a lower uh, amount of energy, and this is also important. And finally, I, have to I want to highlight that uh, we can reach uh, close to 100% of valorization of the mm, metallic elements of the wastes because we can recover them in three streams. First one, the molten metal, we, where we can recover iron and copper. Then we have the inner fraction where we can recover calcium, silicon, for example. And then we have the dust concentrate where we can recover uh, zinc or lead, among others, low uh, classification point elements. Um, the main impacts of this technology, of oh, sorry, of course, reducing fossil-based CO2 emissions because we are able to uh, use biochar instead of coal. We have uh, demonstrated that we are able to achieve a 50 uh, weight percent substitution of coal by biochar. Technically, it's possible to uh, substitute 100 percent, but if we want to find a balance uh, between uh, technical uh, and economical aspects, we have reached the conclusion that 50 weight percent is OK, is enough. Uh, we avoid the issue of transportation because we have an in-house solution and we have this uh, plasma heat system that can be powered by renewable energy sources. We can reduce the primary resource consumption uh, because we are recovering zinc oxide in the dust concentrate, avoiding this uh, um, zinc oxide to be uh, obtained from uh, zinc ores. And we have also this uh, inner fraction that can uh, find uh, a use in application set in the construction sector, for example. Um, we have an increased energy efficiency due to this plasma heating system and because it is a solution that can be adapted to the waste being processed, so this is energetically more efficient. And finally, we are reducing production costs thanks to the less energy consumed, thanks to the um, that, that we are avoiding to make payments for the waste to be managed and because we are obtaining by products with some value in the market. OK, uh, the second technology of the project is the uh, heat addresses the problem and the challenge of the heat recovery in industries. We know that process industry uh, overall, overall sends millions of uh, cubic meters of exhaust gases containing carbon dioxide and other pollutants to the atmospheres. Uh, an important amount of the energy that is not needed in the process is then lost through these exhaust gases. There are other losses, but this is an important amount. In some studies say that around 20, between 20 50 percent of the energy uh, uh, used in the process is finally lost through exhaust gases. So it's a very high amount. 
some industrial plants already recover part of the heat and is using air preheaters, for example, but this is not enough. Innovative solutions are needed to increase the heat recovery rate. So in the project, we've been working with uh, an ORC-based waste fuel recovery system. Uh, this is the demonstrator we have uh, built and uh, already validated. It is, a, it is able to transform uh, this heat into compressed air. Uh, this is different to the solution that is currently found in the market where this, this system usually converts the heat into electricity. But with this innovativeness, we are increasing uh, the um, heat uh, changing um, efficiency. Uh, we have research in coatings for pipes of heat exchanger because one of the problems is the uh, high corrosion problems and high falling problems of uh, materials in contact with the exhaust gases. We have uh, research also in a continuous variable transmission system that is able to reduce from one to three or multiply for uh, three times the transmission rates and the, this way we are adapting um, the heat generated and the compressor demand. And uh, additionally, we have the possibility of storing the excess energy. And we have the two possibilities, a regenerative break that converts the mechanical energy into electricity that is uh, uh, storing batteries, or even uh, we have also the other possibility that is the flywheel that is able to um, store the, the energy as mechanical energy in a rotating disk, as, as kinetic energy in this case. Um, looking to uh, environmental and safety aspect, we have been working on a magnetic ceiling that uh, enables a safe operation in the RC, and we are also working with a less pollutant refrigerant with quite a lower warming global potential. And finally, and in correlation with the third uh, technology, that is the, the digital platform, we have been able to uh, obtain real, da real time data that is sent to a cloud uh, platform. The main impacts of this technology, the main one, of course, will be the energy efficiency because we are transforming waste heat into a useful kind of energy with uh, a 25% of loss efficiency. And we have the possibility of adapting uh, the, the energy generated to the compressor demand. We are also reducing the primary resource consumption because we need less electricity to power the compressors. And also we have, we need lower amount of water consumption. Uh, this water is the one that is usually used in uh, water coolers to cool down the, the gases. We are not uh, cooling down the gases with this, with our recovery unit. And uh, we are reducing production costs thanks to the lower energy bill and thanks to the emission credit savings. And um, let's go quickly to the third of the technologies, um, that is the analytics for factory platform. We know that the 4.0 industry transformation is leading to the generation of high volumes of data in manufacturing processes. Some companies are limited to the collection of this data, but it can represent a very valuable source of information to optimize processes if correctly managed and treated. And of course, tools are needed to collect the, the data, securely store it, transform it, and uh, process it to obtain valuable information. We've, uh, we have done this uh, through this uh, uh, platform that is composed by physical and uh, virtual tools. We have a monitoring and control tool uh, that collects data using wireless sensors. We have the possibility of transferring the data from the physical uh, tools to virtual tools through a data fusion module. And in the virtual side, we have uh, different tools to validate and treat the data with artificial intelligence models. We have the possibility of uh, securely and accessibly storing uh, the data in the cloud. We have this kind of dashboards of where we can easily visualize the data. Uh, and, um, and this data, of course, can help uh, operators to take decisions to prove the, the, the process. And of course, it's important to remark also that this platform is scalable and replicable to different industrial sectors. So the main impacts, we are increasing the energy efficiency thanks to uh, the optimized process parameters that are able to reduce energy consumption with these artificial intelligence-based models. We are continuously adjusting the process parameters 
thanks to this uh, dashboard I was showing you. And we are increasing also res resource efficiency because we are able to obtain uh, the same productivity with a lower amount of raw materials or with a lower amount of energy. And from the economical point of view, we are increasing the productivity, we are reducing the energy consumption, and we are reducing the need of primary raw materials. Uh, before finishing, I, I would like also to, to mention that one of the objectives of the CIRMED project was to uh, not only generate knowledge, but try to transmit uh, this knowledge to different stakeholders. And this is uh, that why we have been working in these uh, learning modules. We have um, developed some uh, modules that contain this, uh, all this uh, content uh, that I will not go into detail because you can have access to all this content in this um, web page and also scanning this QR code. But I would like to say that uh, these, uh, all these modules are divided like in three different levels. We have the first level in which we can have a sort of review in very few minutes of the project. This is mainly added to the general audience. Then we have a second level with more detailed information of the technologies that is mainly added to students. And we have a third level with even more detailed information and even with the possibility of interacting, watching videos, uh, testing the learnings with exercises and so on. And this is also addressed to students, but also to technical uh, people and people with more knowledge about the, the technologies. Uh, and just to finish, invite you to visit our webpage to have more information of the project, to visit all our social media accounts, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Also, we have a YouTube account. We, we have currently a promotional video and we have the recordings of the three technical webinars that were held in May this year. Uh, okay, this is all from my part. I would like to take advantage of this slide to thank, of course, the 15 partners of the project consortium because uh, they have been working very hard and they have been highly committed with the objectives of the project. And of course, uh, if any of the participants of this event is interested in knowing more, knowing more about the project or even having a meeting with the technology owners, Okay, please contact us in my email address or using our social media channels and we will happy to, to arrange a meeting if needed or give you more information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mikael, for this presentation. Very detailed uh, presentation in, in this uh, reduced uh, time. Always is hard to present four years projects in, in 15, uh, 10, uh, 10 minutes. Thank you once again. I think uh, now we have that uh, very short time for exactly for the uh, slide or 30 seconds for each of the uh, question. The first one, the rank, the three serum technologies presented, starting with the one that you think can contribute the most to improve energy and resource efficiency in energy intensive industries. So uh, you have several seconds still available to to mark your answer. I think five seconds remaining still and we would pass for the next one in a few seconds. It's enough, I think, Jakob, <laughs> to make the other one. Yes, this, uh, the second one. Which technologies arouses your interest and you would like to know more about? So, 30 seconds for all of you.
we could see that the winning solution is the digital solution. So not so surprising at this hot topic for the industry. But also heat recover waste, which is impo important. Okay, uh, now we have the time for the presentation of our uh, sister's uh, project. The first one is the uh, Bamboo, which will be given the presentation by Jorge Arroyo from uh, Fundacion uh, Circe. Jorge, the floor is yours, please. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's my pleasure for inviting me today and give you the opportunity to show you some insights about the Bamboo project. Bamboo comes from boosting new approach for flexibility management by optimizing process of gas and waste use. Okay. Next slide, please. Um, Bamboo was funded by the the uh, European Commission in a spirit uh, call of uh, 2018 is an innovation action where, which means that uh, we are reaching the other seven our developments, was funded with more than 11 million of euros by the European Commission. The duration of the project is uh, 54 months. Uh, the project ends in next February and 2023. Uh, project coordinator is Thursday, and here you can see the, the 19 partners of the project. Uh, as you can see, we are uh, technology the centers, uh, technology developers, some small and medium companies, and uh, big uh, demonstrators, uh, steel for sectors. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, we form a strong consortium. Next slide, please. And as you know, the energy transition towards a secure, competitive, and decarbonized energy system is a challenge for the intensive industry of the European Union. In this context, in Bamboo, we are developing technologies which contribute to save energy costs between 15 to 20 percent, reducing greenhouse gas emissions to 23 percent, and improving the energy efficiency between 17 to 20 percent. So in this sense, Bamboo project is aimed at demonstrating innovative technologies based on its three main pillars, waste heat recovery, electrical flexibility, and waste stream valorization. We are working on the demonstration of some technologies in for um, demonstrators of energy industry sectors. In this case, steel sector, petrochemical sector, minerals, and pulp and paper. Uh, next slide, please. In Mumbu, we demonstrate technologies for waste heat recovery. This is to valorize um, waste streams which have a uh, valuable energy content associated to this, to, to their uh, temperature. Um, we are with this bit, we generate uh, energy, uh, which is can be used uh, in other parts of the process. Uh, the case uh, in the bamboo project, I'm so demonstrating two technologies uh, in the in the steel and petrochemical sector. Um, for the steel sector, uh, we are working in demonstrating a high temperature heat pump, which allows upgrades that low to medium grades or medium grade waste heat uh, coming from the steel production production process to higher temperatures. And in this case, uh, we use the heat pump to generate a steam that uh, can be reintroduced in the steel process. So it uh, has the direct impact in the natural gas consumption. So it replaces a part of the steam generated in the boilers filled with natural gas. In the case of the petrochemical uh, sector, we are demonstrating uh, organic ranking, uh, an organic ranking cycle technology, uh, which is used to recover uh, low to medium 
grade two, uh, to, uh, sorry, medium grade waste heat uh, coming from a new distillation unit of the Tupras uh, plant in Turkey and use it to produce electricity. Uh, in this case, this electricity uh, can be used in the, say, in the own plant mm -hmm. to reduce the, the consumption of the external heat. Uh, for uh, oversee with a, a, a steel demonstrator, virtual demonstrator, which is CNR, where uh, the technology is also being replicated. Uh, next slide, please. The second pillar, uh, which is, is the electrical feasibility, includes uh, technologies and operational strategies uh, would make it possible that industries uh, can benefit from lower prices of electricity and they can produce, uh, potentially provide uh, services and benefits uh, of the potential integration of renewable energies. The Bamboo project is applying the con this concept in a pulp and paper uh, sector in the company, uh, the German company, UPM where different strategies and technologies are implementing to allow the operation of the whole plant like a battery in the regional power grid. The concept in this case means that when the renewable uh, generation, in this case photovoltaic generation, is high, uh, for example in summer periods, um, the plant will reduce or even shut down the own uh, electricity generation system and start to consume from, from the grid. Uh, on the other hand, in winter mode, when the, when the renewable gen generation uh, is low, the plant um, uh, consumes, uh, from consumes electricity or, and generates electricity uh, from with its own uh, system, which owns the generation system, but uh, not only consume internally, but it can provide uh, some electricity to the grid. Next slide, please. And the third pillar is the waste stream valorization, which includes technologies and processes, which are also great. Uh, some waste streams coming from processes with a calorific value and can be used as fuels in other processes. Here in Mambu, uh, we are demonstrating different technologies in the steel and mineral sector. In the steel sector, uh, the concept is to increase the valorization of the process gas coming from the steel, to, uh, steel plant of Asturias uh, of, of Arteno Metal. In this case, in Bamboo, we are applying two technologies, simulations and a monitoring system with CFD uh, simulations. Um, although we can uh, analyze the behavior of the combustion such catches previously uh, the implementation, the industrial implementation of, of these uh, catches. And uh, with the free monitoring system, we can monitor uh, the Using artificial intelligence, uh, we can monitor the combustion of these of process gases. In the case of the mineral sector, uh, the, demo, the demonstrations are based on the use of biomass instead of coke in in the in a rotary kiln, and we the two technologies developed are based on simulation on and the development of a beautiful uh, lower NOx uh, barrier. Um, in this case, uh, the demonstration stories uh, the company Grecia Madness sites, and we have also a virtual demo in the mirror sector, uh, which is more in Spain. Next slide, please. Here I have collected uh, some results. The project ends uh, next February. So we are in the final stage of the demonstrators. 
but we have some results, for example, for the steel and iron sector, we have reached 70% uh, of natural gas substitution in a semi-industrial furnace used by uh, Arthur to test the, the to test the parameters and strategies before the final implementation. In this uh, furnace, we have reached 99% of combustion radiation accuracy. In this case, we monitor the rate uh, to fuel ratio. Uh, with a 99% of accuracy and in the part of the heat pump, which is currently um, uh, tested in the facility, in Arcelor facilities, uh, we are using uh, uh, 250 kilowatts the heat pump. In the case of the petrochemical sector, uh, uh, we have designed a uh, two megawatts uh, electric power overseas which allows the decrease of 7.5 tons of CO2 per year for the Ducas plant in Turkey. And in the case of the magnesite with the low NOx burner and uh, combined with the replacement of biomass uh, in the gas fuel, we have reached a 40% decrease on NOx emissions and we have reached a 50% of um, echo in this case as fossil fuel substitution by biomass uh, without compressing the quality of the final products. And for the concept of regional battery, this is a task that is also going and it has a potential of 100 megawatts the, the, to integrate in the regional German grid. Next slide, please. So here we have a summary uh, of the number of webinars. November was the bamboo industry month, where we have um, performed uh, five webinars presenting five uh, technologies in waste keep recovery. In this case, by oversee fuel flexibility in combustion processes, combustion monitoring using computer computer vision, the another webinar regarding high temperature heat pumps and steam generation. And finally, um, the last was the uh, webinar which was related to the virtual battery model. So if you could not attend, you can find the presentation in the resources page of the Bamboo project web page and all the webinars recorded in the YouTube uh, a channel of the project, so I encourage you to go to them. And next is like this. And of course, uh, thank you for attending. If you have uh, some questions or you can reach me, here you can find me by uh, email address. Um, I am Jorge Claudio from Fundación Fiesta. Thank you for your attention today. Thank you, Jorge, for your presentation. It was very comprehensive and looks like that you engaged the attendees. You, you have the question, but uh, uh, you could uh, answer this on the Q&A session after ending of, of this uh, blog. Uh, thank you once again. And now is the turn of uh, Marie Cabaret, uh, representing uh, Achieve uh, Project. Uh, Marie, the floor is yours. Yes, good morning, uh, everyone. Do you hear me well? No. Yes, I could hear you. Ah, OK. It's good now, still good. Yes, yes, the voice, the voice is perfect. OK. So, so I am um, I'm going to present you uh, a chief project. For, uh, so I'm working at uh, CA and uh, we are the coordinators of uh, this uh, European project, Horizon 2020. So achieve mean innovative high performance alloys and coatings for highly efficient intensive energy processes. Okay, so this uh, project is uh, um, is coordinated, so I say, by CEA and is composed of uh, 11 partners 
from six uh, different uh, European countries and also Turkey. We are almost at the second uh, years of this project because it started uh, in October 2020 and we still have about uh, 18 months uh, until uh, so March uh, for 2024. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. So the different partners of uh, the project are some uh, RTO like CA with uh, Amen, VTT, uh, Technalia. We have some uh, in industrial with uh, Engenic, uh, Synthesis, Tubos, Ronidos, and our uh, end user, which are uh, ArcelorMittal, uh, Tupras, Constellium, and uh, partner Piano in charge of uh, the communication. Next slide, please. So, what uh, so uh, achieve project is uh, involved in uh, the challenge of the energy intensive uh, industries, which is which represents a big sector for the European uh, Europe, meaning 6.3 million jobs and about 20% uh, of the EU GDP. The counterpart of this uh, sector is that uh, a really huge uh, energy demand because it represents about one third of the global energy demand of the European Union, around 40% of the global CO2 emission, and more precisely about 15% of the CO2 emission of the European Union. So we have to deal with a big challenge in terms of uh, energy uh, consumption and uh, energy and CO2 emission to be involved so in the European Green Deal. So uh, if you go to the next slide. So what's uh, in this uh, preview of the high energy intensive industry uh, context, what is the ACHIEVE concept? So our main goal is to improve uh, different uh, process performance and energy, energy efficiency in the energy high intensive industries by uh, developing more durable materials components and equipment. So what was what is the guiding line of uh, our project is that a first step to implement uh, and to develop novel integrated artificial intelligence aided materials toolbox in order to define uh, I would say from the literature and many database, uh, some candidates of uh, novel materials that would uh, answer in a theoretic, theoretic, theoretically in the best way to the different uh, requirements specified by our use case. Following this first step, uh, the novel materials and coating solutions will be developed so it's, uh, in the first time at lab scales and then by increasing uh, the quantity in more industrial case. Those materials will be validated uh, in three user, user case in the aluminium, steel and petrochemical industries. And following this uh, validation, uh, we will promote and disseminate the results uh, of the project. Next uh, slide. So the different uh, objective is first uh, to develop uh, models and uh, simulation for the materials designs based on the computational modeling and artificial intelligence and then uh, developing the different uh, novel materials that I'm going to describe uh, depending on uh, different use case. So the first one uh, will be some uh, polymer derived ceramics coating uh, with uh, improved high temperature erosion and corrosion resistance. The second one is uh, high temperature strength and creep resistant materials uh, based on the novel high entropy alloys in order to reach higher process uh, temperatures. And the first uh, third materials, it's um, 
to de design a new high chromium steel grade with creep resistance of 15% uh, improved. In parallel of all this uh, material development and in order to uh, follow in the real over, uh, environment the life uh, shell of these uh, materials, uh, we will develop some temperature and strain uh, fiber bright grating sensors that will be embedded in the different uh, components for the HEA uh, materials and the PDC coatings um, use case. Uh, the fifth goal, goal sorry, is to demonstrate uh, the performance and the efficiency of all these uh, novel materials in the uh, three uh, different use cases. So PTC coatings and uh, HESA nano composite coatings will be used in the aluminum uh, use case, which is uh, then the HESA materials uh, will be used in a steel use case and PCC coatings and uh, will be used also in the petro petrochemical use case. And final, uh, objective is to promote and disseminate the results of the project. Next slide, please. Uh, so here you can see uh, the project uh, work plan with specific uh, work package uh, focused on the three materials uh, development. We've in parallel some uh, work concerning the computational modeling and artificial intelligence that uh, so this work package uh, is an input for the three work package of materials development but there is a feedback loop because uh, some results and uh, research res experimental results from the three uh, work package three four and five will be uh, re-injected in the work package two in order to uh, to get a more precise and efficient uh, tools in the um, deliver in the definition of uh, the materials with respect to um, some industrial requirements, and then you can see what package six with the sensors development and the final step with the uh, pilot test materials uh, assessment. So uh, the global uh, way of working of this project is a, a first um, so definition of the artificial intelligence uh, modeling by VTT and Heyman, then which is uh, divided for each uh, use case with the first one with the HEA coatings and bulk, uh, the second one with the development of the PDC, and the first one with the chromium steel grades. Uh, different partners will are involved in the third steps because we have to consider to consider the process manufacturing of all these uh, three new materials. How also they will be uh, deposited or uh, produced for the three uh, different use cases, and then the last steps, which is the application meaning to uh, implement uh, directly in the um, industrial use case uh, the different materials uh, to prove their uh, performance. Next step, please. So, um, Achieve uh, started at the TRL at uh, three which uh, consider experiment proof of concept or uh, also that uh, materials were uh, approved and validated at uh, lab scale with uh, the objective to finish at uh, TRL5, meaning that all these uh, materials developed at lab scale need to be uh, approved and demonstrated in a relevant environments with uh, so at Constellium ArcelorMittal and uh, to press in, uh, in Turkey. Next slide, please. 
So with all this, uh, what what is the global uh, expected impacts of the development of these uh, different materials? So we uh, we aim at seeing uh, energy efficiency by uh, 30 percent that will be improved. An objective also to reduce uh, the CO2 emissions of the different uh, plants by 20 percent but mainly also to uh, increase the equipment lifetime by more 20 percent. So right now in terms of uh, planning we are so I said at the beginning we are at most of the we have passed the two years of the project so uh, we are still developing and uh, validating at the lab scale the different uh, materials before starting uh, next March to uh, implement them at uh, industrial level and to prove their performance in a real uh, environment. Next slide, please. So uh, thank you for uh, following this uh, presentation. If you have uh, any question, um, which could be more uh, technical, you can see our uh, web mail. We have also, uh, as many other projects, our uh, website where we um, we communicate on the different events. Uh, just to let you know that uh, yesterday we organized a workshop uh, which were more focused on in terms of uh, results and which has been recorded. So if you have a specific question, uh, the results, uh, I mean, the, you can review this uh, conference uh, in the next few days on the, the website of uh, the project. And thanks a lot for following this uh, presentation and also to the uh, to the um, organizer, organizer sorry, of uh, the conference today. Uh, thank you, Marie, for your presentation of uh, Achieve uh, pro, uh, Project was, uh, uh, in my opinion, inspir inspiring uh, presentation for relevant stakeholders in energy intensive industry. And uh, why? Because I, I think uh, we have uh, one question for you, which you will uh, approach, uh, give the feedback on the Q&A and, uh, and uh, session about the market, but this on the next block of the final event. Thank you once again. And now we have the turn for the next project, Coralis, which will be presented by Marcelino Gallego. Marcelino, the floor is yours. Thank you. Coralis is a creation of new value chains relation through novel approaches, facilitating long-term industry symbiosis. Now, um, Coralis is a four-year project with uh, 29 partners and, four -year, and it's a four-year project. And now we are in the middle of the project. The budget of this uh, project is 22 million and 7,000 uh, million euros. And Coralis is uh, composed by three lighthouses where we will apply some uh, industrial symbiosis solution and three uh, followers. The, the aim of these three followers is to learn how to apply industrial symbiosis solutions. Um, there are small projects, in general, there are small projects where some industrial symbiosis solutions are applied. However, there are not, um, not too many big projects where uh, industrial symbiosis solutions are applied. Uh, and there is a, there are theory about industrial symbiosis without a real application. And Coralis is a project where some industrial symbiosis solutions are applied in a big scale. One of the industrial symbiosis, uh, yeah. Uh, in this uh, slide, we can see the some uh, project has been designed as a demonstration project for generating of a real experience of the deployment of the industrial symbiosis solution. Also, 
Within this project, Coralis will develop a technology based on the TRL concept. This uh, technology is called industrial symbiosis uh, richness. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, in this one. Industrial symbiosis richness level. Um, this industrial symbiosis readiness level consists on the three pillars, technological readiness level, economical readiness level, and managerial uh, readiness uh, level. These three elements are interlinked in a holistic way. In an holistic, uh, in an holistic way, I mean, all of the, these three pillars has the same have the same importance, um, and this industrial symbiosis um, richness level also goes from zero till nine, the same as the technological uh, richness level. Uh, before Coralis, there were uh, a low industrial symbiosis richness level in these lighthouses, and after the Coralis. We hope to get the uh, increase this industrial symbiosis uh, richness level. The objective uh, Coralis is under uh, a spy project. This means that it is a project with high and intensive use of energy. Um, these are the main objective of the Coralis, a deeper understanding of the industrial symbiosis performance based on this key, perf on key performance indicator. Also, the promotion of design and management of the of industrial symbiosis project through industrial symbiosis facilitator. I would like to mention that this uh, facilitator were implemented as a neutral agent agents in order to support the project uh, implementation. Also, uh, profitability and sustainability of the industrial symbiosis uh, opportunities in these industrial areas. A contribution to the decarbonization of the value chains, exploitation of identification uh, of identify uh, symbiosis synergies in the Coralis industrial areas. And also the last one and really important to, to increase the awareness and facilitating uh, knowledge the transfer. Uh, These uh, are the impact, the impact or a specific uh, objective will be measured will be measured in each lighthouse through uh, KPIs, but this, uh, uh, this impact are the impact for the whole project. Uh, for instance, uh, we try to increase the circular economy, improving of at least 15% uh, in energy efficiency, reduction of at least 30% in the total uh, energy intens intensity, a reduction in a CO2 emission of 40%, a reduction in primary raw material intensity up to 20%, a reduction of waste generation at least in 25%, and also a better understanding of relevant barriers. We realize that there is that there are many legal barriers to implement the industrial symbiosis and the circular economy. Effective dissemination of major innovation outcomes, environmental gains, and also the replication of these uh, industrial symbiosis solutions in our uh, followers, which I mentioned before, and also in another scenarios. Here we can see how the Coralis project is structured. Um, there are some uh, transversal activity, activities as uh, management and communication. Then a baseline is defined in demonstration activities. All changes to be implemented are evaluated using some tools and business uh, models. 
Uh, impact, ass impact assessment and lesson learning are evaluating the situation. Um, I mean, how it was before to do the changes and how it is after the changes has been implemented. And finally, the exploitation and the replicate and the replication of this project. Moreover, also uh, we have the communication and dissemination uh, activities also as a transversal activity. Pertiberia is the is one of our uh, lighthouses where we are implementing some industrial symbiosis uh, solution. Pertiberia is one of the largest company uh, for sorry, one of the largest fertilizer company in the Mediterranean area. In Escombreras, we are uh, doing a study of uh, CPS solar to generate uh, to generate energy for a public uh, desalination and for Escombreras factory. Also, Escombreras is developing a novel uh, method to produce the fertilizer. Uh, potassium nitrate using less energy. Uh, the waste of this uh, also the waste of this uh, process which contained chlorhydric acid will be recovered with uh, CO2 or with uh, sulfuric acid from a closed factory in order to recover this uh, chlorhydric acid and uh, cell or use within the process of fertiberia. And below you can find the um, the impact of this uh, lighthouse within the project uh, about the energy efficiency, energy intensity, CO2 emission, raw material intensity, and waste generation. Uh, in the Swedish uh, lighthouse, we are uh, we have a pan and paper company which. Uh, where we will use the heat and the CO2 to fit a tomato greenhouse. Also, uh, in this project is going to be uh, de deployed a feed farm, but this feed farm is outside of a Coralis project. Um, also below you can find the 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 KPIs of this uh, lighthouse. This lighthouse has a big impact in the reduction of the CO2 emissions. The last, the third and the last uh, lighthouse is in Italy, in the Brescia area, using of a uh, material of metal such as uh, steel, cast iron and aluminium enabling the recovery of industrial materials to be used as alternative feedstock and therefore reducing the current land filling uh, ratio in Brescia. Also in this uh, lighthouse we, we will use a biochar instead to use coal. Uh, and below you can find uh, some uh, impact of this lighthouse the reduction, the energy efficiency reduction, the energy intensity, CO2 emission, and the rest. Okay. These are the three followers. The first uh, follower, the followers are um, areas where we are developing and studying the implementation of some industrial symbiosis solution, but only studying. In the Lint, uh, in Lint, in Austria, uh, we are doing a valorization of renewable uh, hydrogen about uh, how to get this uh, renewable uh, hydrogen and use in, Boreal, in Borealis in a steel company. In Basauri, uh, in, in Spain, in, uh, at uh, Sidenor, they are using a uh, thermohill storage. Uh, to use in their own facilities uh, to get energy in a thermo in a thermal heat sorry to store it and use in their own facilities or to provide this energy to external users and the last one uh, in Linz, they are the using and uh, studying how to uh, into a two plus they are using and uh, studying how to use a spent caustic 
for a to to get energy. In Coralis today, we are in the in the second year of the of a four year project. We have some problems because of the pandemic, the energy, uh, the energy crisis, and the war situation, and this make us difficult to find uh, and to buy some equipment, uh, which has get uh, uh, increasing the price from the beginning of the project. Uh, we are facing some uh, technical challenges and legal challenges, as I mentioned, mainly because some uh, byproduct is difficult to catalog it and move from one factory to another. And also we are increasing the awareness of the project and uh, the future of the industrial symbiosis in hub, uh, in hub for circular economy. Well, as I mentioned before, we are 29 partners and the, you can see in this slide and that's all. If Thank you very much for your attending to this presentation. Thank you, Marcelino, for your interesting uh, presentation. Indeed, uh, implementing industrial symbiosis solution for the carbonization of uh, industry in, the, in those time, I mean the pandemic war is uh, very difficult, but I think uh, and I see on your presentation that you're going uh, very well and the presentation was uh, very inter interesting. Thank you. Thank you again for uh, for giving us um, this to the final event of uh, CIRMED. So I think now we have time again for Q&A session where the question which has been given by the attendees uh, are, are published. Uh, also some feedback has been given by the presenters, speakers, but uh, if some, some of the speakers would like to take the floor and give more explanation on it, so feel free to do it. Jorge? Yes, uh, I would like to extend the explanation about the question about if the results of the bamboo project are real or are simulated. Uh, okay, we have a, a lot of demonstrations and I'm going to explain, let's say from uh, more industrial implementation to more theoretical. In, first, in the case of uh, the mineral sector in Grecia Manesite, the low NOx uh, um, burner and the use of biomass is currently being implemented in a daily basis, so it is used in an industrial state. So we can say that if we have reached tier L9, they used in the normal process of uh, magnesite production. So this technology, let's say, is uh, the most successful so far in which uh, industrialization refers. Uh, regarding ArcelorMittal, in ArcelorMittal we have uh, two, two demos for the um, a high temperature heat pan. In this case, the status is that it has been tested in, in EDF, which is the manufacturer of the, of the heat pan. And in, in this moment, it is starting to be tested in ArcelorMittal facilities. So uh, the results will be real results. In the case of the combustion, uh, as I mentioned, they use a semi-industrial furnace where uh, Arcelor tests uh, strategies and so on. Uh, this uh, furnace is fueled with real gases uh, produced in the, in the steel factory. So the results uh, of time uh, in this furnace are uh, real, so they can be extrapolated directly to the furnace, the reheating furnace or other production furnace. Um, uh, regarding uh, electrical flexibility for the UPM, um, which is the battery, the regional battery uh, demonstration, uh, they are using um, some algorithms and forecasting models developed during the project to 
just to consume. They have not uh, started to to provide from electricity to the regional grid. Uh, they are planning to do in the in the next year. And uh, but they are using these models to adapt the generation, this own generation system, the consumption of the generation system, in this case, a combined cycle inside the plant and to adapt the production and generation. So they are um, working, the, the demo is not, they will not be finalized within the, the period of the bamboo project, but they are planning to do it uh, shortly. And um, finally, in the case of overseas, we have, uh, we have the simulation, the calculation, the complete engineering, but uh, unfortunately we couldn't uh, make a real demonstration because pandemic, because uh, some problems with the regulations. So in this case, uh, at the end of the project, we just have um, theoretical results since part of the, since uh, the real implementation is planned to be later. That Thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Jorge, for uh, such uh, details, for the for the feedback on the uh, question. Uh, delivering the solution on the high tier TRL TRL nine is very very impressive. I'm I'm sure that the uh, feasibility study is uh, performed and uh, ready to launch uh, on the market. So congratulations. We have the other question for uh, Marie Cabaret. The question is. So how far the solution of Achieve uh, project is uh, from the market uh, for the from the commercialization commercialization? So right now uh, concerning the com commercialization of uh, the results, uh, we are still under definition. So we have defined uh, the exploitation uh, exploitation results of the project for um, sensors and also the different uh, materials, but the strategy of uh, commerci commercialization is still under uh, definition. So I would okay. say it's not defined yet. Okay, it is more or less a typical situation in European uh, project where uh, at, at, the, at the end uh, all the activities regar regarding with the exploitation uh, strategies a business uh, model uh, commercialization is performed and uh, some some details uh, it it's under under uh, in investigation but uh, uh, rem uh, remembering your presentation i see that you achieve uh, very well uh, outcomes uh, results and uh, good luck with the uh, future uh, possible uh, commercialization Thank you. Uh, we have also the question for the for our project for Silmet projects. Uh, I see that uh, Michael uh, Merchan already already give the feedback. But Michael, if you want to give uh, something more on this question, the question was: As the project ended, at what TRL are the technologies developed? Feel free. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Um, as I have answered in the chat, uh, we have already achieved TRL7. This was the objective of the project and this is what we have achieved. As we have seen in my presentation, uh, okay, we have three demonstrators, but two of them are physical demonstrators, physical equipments that have been already uh, built and uh, are and validated. Well, uh, some of them are still uh, in the final step of validation, let's say, but uh, we've been able to validate them at uh, this uh, industrial environment because they have been uh, implemented in a uh, real industry. Um, going a little bit more in detail for the metallurgical furnace, we've been able to work with or to build an equipment that is able to treat uh, up to 5,000 5, tons per year of, of waste uh, with the treatment rate capacity we have installed. Uh, for the heat recovery rate uh, unit, we are able to recover 25 kilowatts of mechanical power to be to feed the air compressor. And uh, okay, the digital platforms, um, 
have been validated in collaboration with these uh, real scale demonstrators and also have been validated in some other use cases that maybe I can talk a little bit more about uh, during the, the panel discussion. So yeah, this is, this is all Emil. Thank you, Mikkel, for uh, details. So as, as you see, the, the CIRMET is on the right direction for the commercialization of the real uh, solution. Thank you, Mikkel, once, once again. I think uh, we have uh, two short questions on the Slido. Jakub? Yes, the first question, do you find the results of EU projects uh, presented today easily accessible? Please vote it. Also 30 seconds. Looks like that the attendees uh, consider there is uh, easily accessible. Of course, there are always uh, some doubts, but uh, it's hard to present uh, everything in this uh, short uh, time. So I'm rather consider sometimes yes. Five seconds remaining for this question. And the second question, are the current EU policies adequately supporting improvement of energy and resource efficiency in the industrial sector? Again, 30 seconds for give the feedback uh, from your side. So please mark your question, your answer. As we see, it is not, not enough uh, addressing the challenges of the industry uh, sector, so there is the pending work for EU, we could see. Or at least to better present the EU policies for the stakeholders and users. Five second reminding or give the feedback for this question, please. So now we have 20 minutes coffee break. Uh, we have to take break. I mean the present presenters but uh, keep tuned and uh, keep uh, back to us in 20 minutes. We will follow with the panel discussion and meanwhile uh, will be video recordings, uh, cooperatives, uh, videos of each of the project presented on today final workshop. So 20 minutes coffee break. OK, uh, I think uh, we have uh, finished uh, coffee break and uh, some of you all, or all of you uh, take the take the strong uh, coffee for bring the forces for the uh, panel uh, discussion and uh, 
shortly will uh, start it. The panel discussion will be moderated by Franz Horselmenger from Acelor Metal uh, Company. I hope, Franz, that uh, you are ready to, to moderate uh, this. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. I hope my voice is. Um, yeah, yes, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. okay for everybody. Yes, it's perfect. And the background is fabulous. And the background is a uh, not official background. Yes, exactly. to, to give some impression. Um, so um, maybe I should say some words about my person before uh, before we enter into the discussion. Um, so I'm uh, I'm an employee of ArcelorMittal, as as all this said. In within ArcelorMittal, I'm uh, I'm a member of uh, the research, the R and D organization, and. Uh, in this organization, I'm representing uh, ArcelorMittal towards uh, research in Europe, so you, what we call European efforts. But on the other hand, I'm also involved in Aspire, so the organization behind Aspire uh, uh, in H20 and processes for planet in, uh, in the Horizon Europe program. So my role in Aspire is what is called um, a vice chair, a co chair in the advisory structure, and it's especially on energy, climate, and CO2. So, this is my role in, in the Aspire organization. So, just to let you know where, where I'm uh, coming from. Okay. Um, I have been informed that uh, we should first start with the, uh, with the results from, from Slido. So the yes, Jacob, we have here. Jacob is sharing on the on the screen to the attendees the, the results of the question from Slido. So do you find the results of European projects easily accessible? Um, the result is 50-50. Um, one says okay, it's 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 sufficient. Um, my experience is also that it's um, not always easy to get uh, the right the right results from from European uh, projects. So if you are if you are in a network, if you know what is going on, then it's quite easy to have the right results. But if you're starting to to search into uh, certain new domains, then and you want to rely on also on the European project, then it's not always easy. Okay, can we go to the next one? Next slide of question. Are the current European policies equivalently supporting improvement of energy efficiencies, uh, resource efficiency in the industrial sector? And uh, the two thirds of people say, okay, it's not enough. Sometimes, sometimes no. So help them. And one says, okay, it's or uh, somebody says it's it's okay. But this is also a, a, um, an area that I wanted to touch in the discussion uh, later on. In order to find out what the reason is for uh, for this uh, for this uh, support, uh, can we go to the next question? Or was it already the last question? I don't. I don't. This know. was the last question from Slido. Okay, so we have we have touched uh, the Slido questions. So thank you very much for showing them. Um, I would like to start. Um, the discussion in a quite, let's call it easy manner. Um, on on the industrial side, it's important that knowledge is uh, on one hand um, preserved, protected, and made available for uh, for different purposes. Um, and therefore, I would like to, to direct the first question to all of you about the knowledge building in the, pro, in the project. Uh, so I can imagine that uh, during the, the different cases you have mentioned in the project, uh, 
knowledge is generated. So new knowledge that you have known before is generated. And the question is now, what is what has been done with this knowledge? Has it been published? Has it been uh, protected by patent applications? Have you done other um, other uh, protection or, or use of the knowledge? Um, can you say something about it? So from investor perspective, this is an interesting question. Maybe we can go from Michael to Jorgo to Marie and to Marceline in this in this order. So please respond. OK, so I can start. Uh, thank you for the for the question, because I think it's uh, really, really interesting. And, and I think it's one of the challenges uh, we have no? when when those of us who, who are working in 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 research uh, uh, in research projects. In our case, in uh, cement uh, for the cement consortium, this uh, was uh, really important. Um, and if you have seen my my presentation. Uh, one of the things we have implemented um, have been the uh, learning uh, courses, the online courses, because one of the uh, our objectives was that uh, try not to uh, keep the knowledge only for us, only for the consortium. Of course, there can be some confidential issues that are not going to be um, given <laughs> to the general public. But there are a lot of uh, aspects, a lot of uh, things that can be uh, transmitted. And this one, this was one of our, our objectives. And this is why we've been working in these uh, learning courses. We have developed different courses depending on the level of the people who want to reach them. So this was an interesting activity to try to, to reach Know, the, the general public also so that they know what we are doing with with public funds from Europe no uh, this on the one hand and then uh, of course there are also scientific papers we have prepared like five six scientific papers up to now there are two or three more in progress because some of the results I think are quite interested to be presented to the scientific community. We uh, work, uh, we, we have made a lot of uh, oral talks in different international and national conferences. And finally, um, concerning the patents, uh, we are also working in, in, in a patent. Uh, more specifically, the continuous variable transmission system will be probably patented by, by, by the panel that has uh, developed it. Uh, and well, yes. Yes, this is this is all from my from my side. Okay, thank you. Can you to continue? Uh, yes, uh, regarding bamboo project, uh, I agree with Mikel that sometimes it's really difficult to find the. Uh, you need to find an equilibrium between confidentiality and the need to spread your results. Uh, in scientific conferences or so on. In case of the bamboo <coughs> at this moment, uh, which uh, are almost finished the, the project, we are also in, in uh, boosting the, the dissemination activities uh, during the project. Is, uh, during the, the last uh, review with the project officers is something that they encourage us to, OK, you have great uh, scientific results, but you need to publish them. You need to show everybody to make more accessible. And in this last uh, period of the project, we we have um, participated in in some conferences, international conferences from all technologies. We have also uh, one scientific paper about uh, combustion uh, in one uh, peer review uh, publication for the battery case. We have also uh, publish uh, how the models for forecasting of electricity prices in Germany uh, were calculated. Uh, we have a person in CIRCE who is uh, uh, um, trying to obtain this uh, uh, doctoral thesis regarding combustion monitoring, the use of uh, uh, waste uh, streams in the steel sector, the use of int artificial intelligence algorithms, so yes, this is uh, we have also the webinars that uh, during this month that uh, in one and a half hour we present the project and the results of its technologies. Uh, we we were encouraged by the commission to 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 foster these activities, and I think that in this last month uh, is something to where we have um, we we have done or we are doing. And this is, as the question said, this is important to to get to the public. 
to the to split the results. Any any patent application that is possible on the project? Uh, no, no patents. Uh, I think okay. that at this moment there are no patents planned. Good. Marie, what you what do you think? Um, when you were in the first two years of the project, so it's maybe not so easy to already speak about scientific uh, work and, and 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 publications and patent applications or whatever. But maybe you also have an opinion. So um, concerning Edge, so we have uh, one partner that is in charge of um, the war package for the exploitation. So at the beginning, we have identified about nine key exploitation results. And so for each one uh, in, um, I mean, in relation with uh, the researchers and also the industrial, we, um, we have defined what will be the strategy for each um, key exploitation result? And um, for next March, uh, we will have to update this uh, this work. So for the moment, yes, it's a little bit early to define exactly what we will be the strategy, but um, we are working early on it because the goal is to have some, um, and I mean the the agreement with the European Commission is to have some. Uh, publication, but however, uh, we have started already to do some uh, publication about uh, some results of the project, which can be found on the on our website. And uh, we try to also to say to participate uh, as much as we can to different uh, conference or events to promote uh, the different results of the project. And uh, I think for the Coralis project, it's also a little bit uh, early. Maybe Marcellino, you can you can say even at this moment something about it. At this moment, we are working in some publications, and we are planning to do a uh, total of around eight publications. And uh, with regard to the knowledge, we are uh, working in a new technologies. For instance, such as uh, resins in the technology of uh, potassium nitrate to develop also uh, new technologies about uh, how to recover and recycling the chloridic acid. And uh, really an important one, which uh, we is almost complete, a uh, metal recovery from waste, such as uh, pyrolysis. And also we are evaluating, is not finished the result, about how to use CO2 in a, with no harm in plants and a human beings in an economical viable, viable solutions. And at the moment we have no plan of any patent, but uh, maybe we could, that we could do one, but it's not 100% sure. Yeah, you may, be, you may be somewhat surprised that I asked the question about the patent application, but the patent application is always a, a hint to say, yeah. okay, you're really, you're really on the top. You're really uh, making making breaks, uh, breakthroughs in terms of, of technology. On the other hand, from from an uh, industrial point of view, it's it's important to secure um, industrial property rights. So that's the reason that I asked the question in the beginning. Yeah. So let's move on now a little bit uh, towards um, um, the end of your projects. Um, Matu, your the CIRMED project is officially ending today. That's what I understand. Um, the Bamboo project uh, is also close to, to finalizing. And the other two projects are more in the middle uh, or uh, yeah, in the middle. Um, what is the output at the moment that you would that you would see in the in the two ending ending projects and then the question is what is the benefit at the moment by whom and the last question which may be the most important one is what can be still done more with the results which are available so what can you what can you do more with uh, av available results do you see some some ideas on how, on how to use them i would like to direct the question to to michael and to Jorgo please. Okay. Uh, okay, as you have mentioned, um, the similar project is uh, very close to any, it will end at, uh, at the end of the year, 
31st of December is the final deadline and we will have the final review meeting with the Commission in February just to close everything. And uh, concerning the outcomes uh, from the project, uh, okay, um, we have three main outcomes that are the, these three main uh, demonstrators of the of the different technologies that have been developed. Uh, so concerning the metallurgical furnace, um, we can say that uh, it has been validated with um, a high treatment rate uh, of waste. So I, I would say that this uh, development is very, very close uh, to be to be commercialized. Um, OK, we are now working in a batch mode uh, and to be commercialized probably we will have to pass to, to, pass to a continuous mode of, of operation. Uh, and there will be some things to do, of course, and this would be uh, probably the main barrier that we, we have to be addressed when, when trying to implement this. Uh, I'm going to tier eight or nine. So this is the next step, of course, in this in this technological development. Then uh, going to the heat recovery uh, unit. Here uh, uh, again, we've been uh, able to conceptually validate uh, the system because uh, here uh, um, I would say that it's uh, quite innovative. No, this this this. Um, idea of transforming the heat uh, directly in, in compressed air uh, so we've been challenging a lot of a lot of technical difficulties during the, the developments uh, but we've been finally able to solve all of them and now we have a, a demonstrator a small scale demonstrators in this case i would say so the next step in this uh, technological development will be to escape this a little bit up in order to be implemented in uh, industries where they have very, very huge amounts of waste to be recovered. And uh, finally, the third solution are, are the digital platforms. Uh, I would say also that they are quite close uh, to be commercialized, mainly two of them, because we've been working in a lot of modules that are uh, can be introduced in one unique platform, but two of the modules, uh, more specifically, uh, the optimization uh, tool and then the um, that, that tool to visualize all the data real time in the cloud have been uh, have uh, advanced a lot during the project. Um, they have tested uh, two, the two of them in real uh, scenarios uh, with, the, with the industries uh, uh, we had in the project. They have test, been tested, they have uh, achieved very good results. So uh, hopefully I think they will be very soon in, in, in the market. Jordan, what is your position? Give feedback. Yes, uh, regarding Bamboo Planet, we are uh, Bamboo Planet, Bamboo Pro Project. We are sorry, uh, we are in the last months. Uh, we know it's important to make uh, good. Uh, we are analyzing the breakability, so we need to do. Uh, we have a lot of public deliverables, and this in, in our case is important to 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 make good deliverables to show the people uh, what have we done in the bamboo, what are the results and how they can extend that in, to the industries. We have a lot of technologies developed in the bamboo. Some of them, as I explained, um, are in more advanced material. They, for example, in Grecia magnesite are using the, the Lovenox burner. So we just need to to present the results, to see what is the interest of the industry, mineral industry or cement industry in order to extrapolate this knowledge. Um, in other cases, uh, we are going to reach a lower tier and in the case of waste recovery, waste heat recovery, in my opinion, uh, and this is also that the uh, heat pump technology developers, the, the Australian Institute of Technology uh, was sensing is that uh, industries are asking for more demonstrations. Uh, it, since uh, we asked for, uh, we, we from a uh, pandemic, uh, we need to extend the project some months. And one of the uh, good uh, reasons we give 
to the to the European Commission in order to have such months of attention is that there uh, wasn't a demonstration about how heat pumps can recover the uh, waste heat from from industrial sites, for example. So I uh, think that the next step is to promote uh, these industrial demonstrations and to analyze in, uh, how uh, this equipment is going to perform uh, when operating uh, through a period of time. We can have some results based in some experimental tests, but there are, uh, or, or this is something that during the bamboo project uh, we have realized that, that there are a big jump uh, between what we obtain in laboratory to the industrial, and there are some uh, regulation aspects um, uh, or the the what uh, is optimal in the laboratory. There is no optimal in the industrial site. For example, the, the the waste stream currents are variable, not so, not, uh, they are not stable, and they need to adapt, the results vary, and, and we don't know at this moment how this equipment is going to perform uh, in one year, two years. So I think that in most of the technologies, uh, what we need uh, right now is to demonstrate that this technology, which uh, have uh, which uh, whose results are good in terms of uh, efficiency can be in work in industrial times and in, in, in industrial period of two or three years. Another another um, I think um, consideration could be on the um, changing energy situation that we have at the moment in Europe. Um, I, Michael and Jorgo, are you at the end of the project? So you you cannot modify your project anymore, or we will not have an impact on what you have done in the project. But for uh, Marie and for uh, March, Marcellino, um, this could have an impact on what you are uh, what you have planned according to um, to the activities in the project, and what uh, what is maybe um, a change that you could have in the project due to the changing energy situation. So in in, in Europe, um, um, if you look back to uh, to two years or three years, uh, um, people were moving to uh, the integration of a lot of renewable energy, and nowadays, due to the you know, to the to the war in 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 uh, in, um, in Ukraine. The supply of um, natural gas, which was thought as an as an as an transition um, scenario towards the the full integration of renewable energy, is not so available anymore. So it's it's quite yeah, unstable at the moment. The question is to Marie and to Jogelino: Does this influence your your project? Do you expect other outcomes of the projects you have running at the at the moment? Will the efficiencies that you will have uh, different? Uh, how do we see it? So, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, for Achieve project, right now we are facing some um, issue, but with no impact for the moment on the um, on the work plan because the industrial implementation has not uh, started yet. But for example, one of the partner are. Um, have the plant that is not uh, working uh, right now, so because of um, increased price and uh, war or so. So we have um, different uh, solutions. So right now, uh, as I said, the uh, impact is not uh, planned on the, the timetable. But uh, if uh, need be, um, there is some possibility with uh, time extension with the European Commission. So it will be one uh, possibility we will have. And uh, if there is some issue, um, we are following closely the situation with uh, risk assessment strategy uh, that we try to, to get the most uh, accurate possible. And then uh, 
a close uh, discussion also with our uh, project officer and the European Commission to see what are the different possibilities that uh, we've had, knowing that at the beginning of the project uh, we had the issue with the, um, uh, the COVID-19. Uh, we managed uh, to progress with the of the project thanks to uh, internet and uh, virtual uh, meetings. So we will uh, have to um, consider this risk and uh, to find best uh, solution. But for now, uh, impact are not. Uh, we are just anticipating a risk on the the work plan. But the changing energy energy situation in Europe is not a real uh, issue for the execution of the projects. Mainly the let's say the impact um, the companies have in order to execute the projects. So this is the main. And Marcelino, on your side, uh, what do you expect from the changing energy situation in Europe on your project? Uh, more than the change of the energy situation, we have a big impact because of the inflation, which is also a consequence of the the problem which you mentioned. Because uh, we, uh, when we uh, define the equipment to be uh, buy, uh, the price it was uh, three, even uh, four times uh, higher than what we expected. And it was difficult to find the proper uh, equipment and assets for the solutions we were uh, developing, developing, and this uh, took a long time in the in the companies to take the decision to buy the equipment and then to do the the deployment of the equipment. This maybe at the moment it has been the major impact of this problem, which uh, you mentioned. it's not uh, not really the changing energy situation it's really the impact of let's say the, the, the inflation the costs and, and, and things like this that, that bother yes. you the most, the most. It, maybe it could be related but uh, finally is the inflation yeah, the prices yeah yeah it's tough tough for everybody who enters into project now and uh, and wants to start and sees that the uh, planning that uh, made uh, one month one year ago is not according to, to the financial planning that we have uh, at the moment. Um, let's move now to um, another question, and it is about energy efficiency and, and European policy. Um, but during, during the question and answer session, it's also, it was also somewhat indicated that it's not so easy to understand always the needs coming from the European policy side. Um, if, if I ask you now, um, what does energy efficiency increase in Europe mean to you or to your project? Do you, can you easily explain it to um, the outsiders? So the ones who are attending here the webinar, it may be good to, to try to listen to all, to all of you. So energy efficiency in Europe should be increased from towards, I don't know, the last value now, was it 32% or was it 40% or is it even more than 40% now? But so this is this is mentioned in, 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 in the Fit for 55 document. So it's a document describing how, how we want to move towards a decarbonized Europe. There is a new one called Repower EU, so an answer in order to, to cope with the with the latest energy supply situation. And uh, in this document, there are also some values mentioned, but these values and, and these documents, are they familiar with you? Do you understand the, the numbers which are mentioned there? And what does this, this energy efficiency mean, mean in your projects? Um, it would be nice to, to get your feedback on that. Um, can we start from, from Marcelino to, uh, to Jorgo and then Mikael and then Marie? Please. Okay. Uh, in Coralis project, we have a goal of a reduction of a, at least fifteen percent in energy efficiency, and also sorry, an improvement of at least fifteen percent in energy efficiency, 
and a reduction of 35% uh, in total energy intensity. And also is not related to energy, but in the case of Coralis, as we are using CO2 in, the, in a circular economy, our reduction of 55% of the uh, CO2 emissions. And in a primary raw material intensity, a reduction up to 20, 20%. And also the waste generation, at least in a 25%. This is related to a, one of our uh, lighthouses in, in Italy, um, which they are increasing a lot, the waste, uh, reducing the waste generation. And this is uh, one the main of our goals in, in Coralis related to this uh, saving energy. So I understand from you that um, so if people speak about energy efficiency improvements, then then it's clear it was what is meant by it. So, OK, let's move on to um, I think it was Mika. Yes. OK. Uh, OK, for me, what is energy efficiency? Uh, I would say that uh, what I understand is um, when we're talking about increasing energy efficiency of a process, for me, is trying to uh, obtain the same productivity with a, a lower amount of energy consumption. Uh, for example, in the case of our uh, metallurgical furnace for waste valorization. If at the beginning, uh, without any improvement, we were able to process one ton of waste with uh, 500 kilowatts hour, uh, after the project, we will be able to consume only 400 kilowatt hour. So we are reducing 20%. Uh, you are increasing the energy efficiency of the process in a 20%. Uh, this is uh, how I see. Of course, there are so many things to have into consideration. Sometimes it is difficult just to focus in one process unit and you have to talk about the overall uh, and have a holistic view, no? because sometimes we are also, uh, we have to consider uh, all the uh, energy efficiency of the whole value chain. Uh, it depends a lot, eh? but, but in general, I'm easily saying uh, for me, uh, when we are talking about a specific process, is trying to do the same, the same amount of products with lower amount of energy consumption. Okay, good. Uh, let's move on to uh, Jorgo and then to Marie. Okay, yes, I agree uh, with Mikel in, in more efficient processes. I will add also in the part of the raw materials trying to obtain the same uh, product with low energy and low material in this case this is what we are uh, or what I will I see as efficient processes in case uh, on the bamboo project we work in efficient processes in the three pillars let's say was heat recovery part of the uh, or the heat uh, um, is recovered so uh, this is translating less uh, fuel consumption or electricity consumption. If we can, uh, in the part of the electric flexibility, if we can adapt to the production of the grid to periods with uh, high uh, energy, energy electricity production, photovoltaic, for example, if we can adapt the production of the factories to these periods or the generation system in the case of the pulp and paper, the electric generator system, we are uh, talking about also um, more efficient processes and in the case of the waste uh, stream valorization, the process uh, uh, are more efficient since part of the natural gas use uh, as fuel is, is substituted uh, by the own process of process gases uh, generated by the uh, in, during the process. So I think that we are all working in more uh, or the project or these projects working on more efficient process and the ideal processes that uh, zero energy and 
lost during the process and zero waste. And this is the main objective we need to, to reach. It. Maybe we'll yeah, come back to the Meanwhile, I would like I would like to continue um, with uh, the next question, but um, directed to the ones who have almost closed the project uh, at the moment. So I mentioned before that um, the European directives speak about um, speak about an energy efficiency increase of about um, well. I think it's now 40% or even I've seen a number of 45% towards, um, I don't remember now the years uh, exactly. And at the moment, this energy efficiency um, target or objective is at the level of, I think, 20% in 2020 or something like this around this. And we should, uh, in 2020 or before 2020, we should move to to 32% uh, in, in 2030, and now this, this 32% is, is increased, I, I, I think, at to 36 or 38, or uh, depends on, I think, on the sector. Um, what do you think about these targets? Do you think, according to your experience you have in the project, and maybe also in other projects, do you think we will be able to reach uh, higher efficient energy efficiency and here we speak about you know, improving by 15 20 percent in 10 years uh, will this be feasible in the in the areas that you have seen in 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 your uh, research or in this project that you have handled until now um Jorgo, Mikael, up to you again Okay, I can answer first. Uh, they, th these values are, uh, I think that they will, we, we are working on with this target, they will be hard to reach uh, because there's, there's uh, uh, us uh, really quick. <laughs> so uh, innovation takes uh, some time, takes some years, but what I have uh, seen during these years in this project and in other projects is that uh, energy intensive industries uh, want to to reach this uh, this uh, efficiency level, this uh, decarbonization targets. So they are continuously asking us, technological centers, how can you know, what uh, technologies can they uh, apply in this process to be more efficient? Uh, how can they switch, uh, for example, fuels to hydrogen now that is in has wood? So um, we we see this is this uh, targets uh, very ambitious, but we have uh, seen also that the mindset of the companies and researchers and so on is, is changing in order to to, to go to the through this to total decarbonization in their processes to make more clean processes so it's good to to see that uh, everybody is working together we are working together to to get to reach so ambitious targets so you think uh, it's 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 possible that we that we reach these efficiency levels in in 10 years time and me and uh, Mikael, what do you think what can you tell us Yes, uh, I have uh, quite similar experience as, as Jorge's. Um, I think it will be difficult. Uh, I mean, when when these uh, when these uh, numbers were defined, I don't know, two three years ago, uh, I think it seemed that 2030 was was very far, but uh, little by little is, is approaching, uh, and we have like lower time to reach these very very ambitious uh, objectives. But we are in the way. And this is the important thing. Uh, we're in the way. We are doing things. Uh, I think the perspective of, of the people in general and of course of the industries is changing. 
I think they are, um, they know they are responsible of uh, decarbonization, uh, trying to ralenticize the climate change and this kind, kind of things. I think uh, they are now, they know that, that they have a very important role uh, in this, uh, to reach these objectives, because uh, they are consuming a lot of energy, a lot of resources, and we cannot maintain this for a lot of more years. So things have to be done, things are being done. Uh, there are a lot of research uh, projects. Uh, the European Commission, I think, is uh, betting quite hard on uh, giving money to industry, to research centers, to uh, try to develop uh, technological solutions. And as Jorge was mentioning, I think it's important this collaboration between uh, industrial companies and, and research centers, because research centers have this knowledge, this capacity of developing the technological solutions, there's them in laboratory first, then in a pilot scale plans and try to reach the market and then the industry has to uh, validate this and try then uh, this 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 um these developments and of course um, i think industries have, have an important role and they have to uh, bet also on these new technologies because sometimes i think they are waiting until the technologies completely validated and sometimes I think they have to be like these early um, adopters now the technology is mainly this big industry that has that capacity try to adopt try to test these technologies and show the rest of the industries small scale industry that these technologies are um, working well and can improve this uh, energy efficiency and contribute to the carbonization and these kind of things. Okay, so I understand from you that uh, if we do a lot of effort, we could reach uh, the line which is put uh, by, by the directives. But before we move now to the, let's say the question from uh, which has been put here, I would like to hear also from you, Marie, uh, the opinion about reaching, about reaching the, the the target set in this directive. So energy efficiency of 32% is up, is now lifted to, I think, 36 or 40% in the, in, in the new documents. So this means in, 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 in 10 years times, we have to more or less increase energy efficiency by, by, by 15, 20% of, of processes. And on industry side, um, we are used to, um, in the in the in the two decades before to a, to a speed of around um, uh, 0 0.8 to 1 percent increase energy efficiency increase per year so this would mean uh, um, yeah, if we do if we continue like this it's maybe eight ten percent that we will have at uh, in 2030 but what is asked now is here to double to double really double the effort what um, is your opinion about it uh, I would say that it's a very big challenge that um, the European Commission uh, imposes. Uh, right now, for example, in terms of uh, ACHIEVE, we don't have concrete results in terms of uh, efficiency of uh, the novel material. But in the hypothesis that uh, these uh, materials work well with respect to what we are expecting, um, the goal is really to decrease the frequency, for example, of the equipment replacement, or also to to increase the resistance of the different materials, for example, to heat uh, to hot uh, temperature. So it means that maybe we will be able to decrease by uh, some um, uh, by many degrees, for example, the process temperature. So I would say that with thanks to many um, several uh, improving improvements or in terms of uh, process yes we can expect to uh, decrease the the energy consumption but uh, for sure uh, i mean we are developing the materials right now for just uh, three plants of really high energy demand uh, plants but there is a big world that is needed, I think, by the industrials in order to share and to exploit well the, the result in order that it becomes some um, good uh, practice and uh, that uh, the innovation and the novel materials are spread through the different industries and that um, everybody works 
together in uh, with one hand to to achieve this uh, this goal. You know, it's uh, it's time to look to this to this question about applicant applicants tips for future projects. So I can imagine that uh, the ones who ended projects and the ones who are busy with projects are of course again interested to uh, think about new project ideas for new projects, make proposals. Um, or whatever. Um, in the field of energy, energy efficiency symbiosis. Um, what tips um, would you give to others in order to prepare uh, project proposals of the futures of the future? So what is what is according to you key uh, and or uh, one two elements key elements where you say okay this this should be really a part of future proposals. Well, your answer can also be a very big help in order to shape the future uh, course for funding. So well, you know the Horizon Europe 23 and 24 is now uh, published or pre-published, but uh, we are looking all, always uh, further, so 25 and, and, and the years after. So if you have some tips that can help the ones who want to make proposals in the future and the others who will prepare texts for a course for funding, would be nice to share it. So please uh, um, start again with Jorgo and then with Marcellino and, and Maria and Mika. One of my, of, uh, from Coralis, one of the main barriers we find is that the uh, legal aspect, because sometimes we find difficulties in how to catalogate by product. For instance, uh, when we are moving waste from one company within one country to another company, it's difficult to catalogate this kind of waste. This is an example again about the legal barriers. We have this kind of problems and uh, I would like to uh, raise the hand about the, because uh, the European Commission is uh, asking us for a challenging target in a reducing energy and increase of economic circular economy and so on but then we find some legal barriers which uh, we focus in technical solutions and we are sometimes uh, lock or stop it by legal and uh, legal aspect yeah this is one of my points from Coralis. so you discovered it uh, at a rather late stage um... I think this legal this legal barriers. It would be nice to have some input or support in the very beginning on on legal aspect before you start. Okay, you go. What would you what you, what would you like to share with us? Um, something similar uh, that Marcelino happened to us, and um, to avoid this, I think that uh, when you are. Uh, form and consortium of the project, it's important to have uh, meetings between uh, uh, research centers, uh, industries, uh, technology developers, and to have a, a, a strong, a, a, a good proposal and that uh, to know uh, some barriers, as Marcelino said, legal barriers, technical barriers, in order to know it. Is make a good proposal is hard. Uh, we have uh, a whole department is uh, working in the proposal to form a strong consortium is it is uh, a hard work as I mentioned, and, and depends on <clears throat> on and I think the most important is to have demonstrators and industries and team involved in industries. Uh, which uh, have uh, which want to innovate. We had to uh, test their innovation, show innovations to the world. So it's uh, when you are going to 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 a proposal for a for a call. Uh, I think you have uh, uh, at at uh, industry uh, a demonstration site uh, which want to innovate. Uh, you can. Uh, discuss. You can have meetings with them, and you can find uh, 
innovative solution which can be funded by the by the European Commission. Maria, what is uh, your tip to the community? The most important one. Uh, I would say to have a strong uh, uh, idea and um, objective to because it's a really challenging um, issue that we are facing with the uh, global warming uh, and so long. I would say to try to be the, the most innovative and uh, to, to work with uh, whole scientists because uh, all together we can do uh, many things and this is what uh, we can see with um, with European project meaning that uh, thanks to uh, partners if you have a not institute uh, solution with uh, networking and working with other partners we can find uh, solutions. Uh, Michael, your last hot tip to the community, what would you say? Okay, uh, so from my experience, uh, I would say that uh, when preparing uh, these kind of proposals, I think it's important to describe very well which is the need uh, you are going to try to solve with, with your uh, technological developments. Then uh, try to define very well which is uh, the starting point uh, because you are always starting from 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 a point and and where you want to to reach uh, after the three four years of of development of the project where you are and where you want to reach and once you reach there and you are able to uh, validate uh, all the technological solutions you have been developing the project, uh, which is the impact uh, this is going to have no? um, in terms of eff efficiencies, uh, emission reduction, uh, production cost and, and so on. And then of course you were talking about the, the consortium. I think it's really, really important to make a very um, complemented uh, consortium with, with uh, people uh, for, uh, with partners from from uh, uh, big industries, from uh, small industries, uh, of course research centers that can uh, provide technologies, uh, academic. Uh, I think try to have uh, partners from the whole value chain of, of the technology you are going to develop. This is, a, I think, a, a key aspect when when preparing a project proposal. Um, yeah, now it's already 12.52, so we are, we are a little bit over time. It's, so for me, it's time to, to make here a, a last word and then um, then return to um, to Jakob, maybe. Um, well, from industry point of view, um, we also understand that, that the um, urgency, so the the effort that is needed in order to to move on is 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 increasing so what we have had in in one ticket ago uh let's let's slow for move forward we change to a rapid move forward now and all the i think all the collaborations we can have now with um, with research centers with scientific institutions university with other colleagues in order to speed up are really are really welcome um, now, so all the projects that you have presented, other projects which are there in energy efficiency and in, in other domains are really good to have them, to get the results. Um, I think we, we even have to, to, deep, to, deep, to go deeper in this project and see if we can get out information or knowledge or uh, whatever from, from projects in which other industries are not involved, so other partners are not involved, so also look over the fence and, and try to use the results. But this, I think the speed up will be really important in, the, in this decade. So thank you very much for, uh, for, uh, for this discussion we, you have with us. Um, so thank you much again, and I give back to, to Jacob or to somebody else from the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Franz, for moderating the panel discussion. Very professional, very interesting discussion on the key challenges and uh, outcomes uh, which uh, has to be uh, achieved. Thanks. Thank you one, once again. I think uh, now we'll have short time for the Slido.
Yes, yes. Uh, there is uh, some some question. Uh, write in maximum three words. What was for you the most interesting message from the event? So some some words up uh, just just a few. Let's see how the people from the public will be engaged. We do not have uh, too much uh, feedback uh, from the audience. Uh, OK, up here. Uh, something more as this is almost the the end of the final uh, workshop, but. Uh, uh, I see that the people are engaged somehow the commercialization of technology solution industry can more. Of course, it could make uh, more, but needs the the su uh, support from from European uh, com uh, Commission to. Uh, in the implementation. EU funding uh, helps indeed this. This helps uh, uh, not only energy intensive industry, but uh, uh, all the uh, stakeholders, relevant partners which are associated with the. Uh, with the such industries. I think uh, we could pass from for the other. Slido, if we have it, if not. ID from idea to technology, right, right. This is. This is uh, objective of the. Uh, of the Spire projects that uh, we want to propose uh, idea and uh, deliver it, deliver the solution for right uh, technology. And uh, we arrive to the end of the final workshop of the CIRMET uh, project. Uh, many thanks uh, for all the uh, attendees, all the public. Uh, many thanks uh, for our sister project, Coralis Achieve uh, Bamboo, and respective uh, presenters, uh, speakers. So uh, all the recording of this workshop will be available soon on the YouTube channel channel of CIRMET project. Thank, thank you once again for attending, for engagement and uh, fruitful discussion. See you, bye. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.